And we're back again. So we have our first our keynote speaker for today. Um, we, we're going to welcome Jan Muller, who's the CEO of the National Film and Sound Archive. And uh, Jan is a renowned leader in the international digital heritage and culture sector. From 2009 to 2017, he was the CEO of the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision, which comprises one of the largest audiovisual collections in Europe. He was also chair of the European, Europeana Foundation. And I remember meeting Jan when he came on a visit to Australia uh, to talk to us here. Um, and he came to a Grand Peak meeting and we were all wildly impressed. So we were delighted when he took the job as CEO of the NFSA, the National Film and Sound Archive. And when we were forming the Australian Media Literacy Alliance um, and we needed a chair, um, everybody said, well, obviously it's Jan because he's got so much experience and he's such a, a wonderful spokesperson for media literacy. So I'm delighted to introduce Jan Muller. Thank you, Sue. And, and thank you, Julie, for this first presentation. Uh, thank you for the invitation to speak today. And hello, everyone. Thank you for, for joining me here. Um, I also wish to acknowledge and pay my respect to the traditional owners of the land on which we live and work. And I wish to pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. My name is Jan Miller. Thank you, Sue, for the introduction. In, in fact, I am currently in the Netherlands uh, and waiting for a flight that can bring me back to Australia, which is pretty difficult given the, the recent restrictions uh, imposed by the government. As long as airlines are not allowed to fly in more than 50 passengers at a time to Australia, none of them will be able to do so. Uh, almost all flights to Australia have been cancelled or are ridiculously expensive. An average, an average ticket costs uh, about $10,000 at the moment. And that's not fake news, by the way. Um, in, the, in the next 30, 35 minutes, I will talk about the Australian Media Literacy Alliance, which Sue briefly mentioned in her introduction already. And I will also talk indeed about the media literacy case in the Netherlands and um, a few other international examples. Exactly um, what's uh, actually what's happening in, in the world regarding media literacy, especially now during the, the COVID crisis and how that influences this important topic. But let's start with a definition first. Um, what is media literacy? Um, the way we define it in, in the Netherlands actually is it, it is the ability to critically engage with media in, in all aspects of life. It's, it's a critical form of lifelong uh, literacy that is essential for full participation in society, empowering people. Uh, unlike most advanced democracies, Australia lacks a national organization tasked with championing and leading media literacy education for all Australians. Sue so already mentioned it, um, six founding partners, all involved with media, education, science, acknowledge the importance of collaboration to enable the development of a united approach to media literacy in Australia, to, to the benefit of, of all citizens and with a focus on those who are especially vulnerable to misinformation school age children, young people, and, and also older Australians. Let me tell you a bit more about the background and the role of the respective Australian Media Literacy Alliance partners. Um, museums, archives, libraries, public broadcasters, schools, universities, they already play a significant role in supporting media literacy and have done so for decades. The, the cohort of founding members represents uh, a unique consortium of, of key institutions and network organizations who are, in a way, well positioned to tackle this national priority. The Museum of Australian Democracy, one of the partners at All Parliament House, helps people to understand Australia's social and political history by interpreting the past and present and exploring the future. In 2019, it opened to the new permanent exhibition called Truth, Power and the Free Press, which is obviously about all these important topics um, regarding media literacy. 
my own organization, the National Film and Sound Archive, is Australia's living archive, as we call ourselves, of, of audiovisual materials, a uh, provider of media literacy education for students and lifelong learners, uh, and a destination for, for deep engagement with Australian media culture based on our collections, which are an interesting and rich resource for fostering critical perspectives on the media. Actually, we collect and preserve and share the media history of Australia which allows us to provide context around topics like media literacy, but also other political uh, news topics uh, and you name it. Another partner, ABC, the Australian uh, Broadcasting Corporation, is the, the national broadcaster, of course, which, is, which has a remit within its charter to educate all Australians. A long history of providing educational materials to Australian schools and families and in 2018. ABC Education introduced Australia's first Media Literacy Week. The Australian Library and Information Association, um, the organization that seeks to empower library and information professionals through the development, the promotion and delivery of quality library and information services to the nation through leadership, advocacy and mutual professional support. It supports 5,000 member organizations which are made up of libraries and information services. Another partner, the Institute for Culture and Society at the Western Sydney University. They research transformations in culture and society in the context of contemporary global change. Champions a collaborative engaged research for a globalizing digital age and then the Digital Media Research Centre at Queensland University of Technology um, that conducts world-leading research for a creative, inclusive and fair digital media environment. Also, the National and State Library Australia and ACME, the Australian Centre for the Moving Image and the Australian Alliance of Associations in Education joined our network already. So you, you understand it's, it's a broad network, it's a network construction actually aimed at providing as much context and content and expertise around media literacy as possible. For me, for, for us at the NFSA, the National Film Sound Archive, it's actually a no-brainer to be part of this initiative because we are the national agency that is concerned with safeguarding the, the media history of this country. We collect, preserve and share the audiovisual heritage of Australia. And this includes also the media that defines uh, culture nowadays. So apart from film, television and radio, we also collect and preserve video games of Australia and web video. Uh, because you know, at the end of the day, more people watch um, YouTube, um, and, and certain YouTube channels uh, attract more eyeballs than a regular linear television broadcast. Um, so an important part of our future um, audiovisual heritage. We collect also virtual reality, websites related to media, interactive documentaries, etc. Et Which means that a huge part of the 3 million items in our archive is part of our recent history. Actually, that's what we say, we help remember. And that is often much, very much related to education, research, and indeed media literacy. So the, the partners, these six founding partners and the, the other members of the network um, in this recently established uh, alliance, we agreed to work towards the goal of a government endorsed national media literacy strategy for Australia. And we said we will of course, take the importance of this skill for all in society. We will articulate the achievements and challenges in the Australian context. We will provide direction for educators and curriculum development, which and I will talk about it later. It's been a very critical um, topic in the Netherlands, the curriculum development, because you, know, you want to have it covered in a national curriculum. Um, and, and last but not least, we, we, we will raise awareness and, and encourage the whole of community response. Um, yeah, why is this so essential? Well, we live in a democracy where mass media messages are mediated. 
it therefore becomes extremely important for people, for society, to understand the patterns of of ownership and control of media outlets and inquire into what is left out or marginalized. Media democratization can only occur when people, as we call it, demystify the original structure, the functions and the operations of the media, in other words, to understand it, which requires obviously critical media literacy on part of the audience to understand the different shades of media organizations which are governed by the logic of profit rather than maybe in some cases um, what is real what is fake and um, uh, what is true for example americans have been much preoccupied with fake news since the 2016 presidential election which will probably not be a surprise and according to a recent study uh, consider is proliferation a larger problem actually than racism than climate change or terrorism in europe media literacy has been on the agendas of most member countries for more than 10 years now the, the netherlands indeed was, was the first country where media literacy became an official part of the national curriculum which provides schools teachers parents students and the community with a clear understanding of what students should learn regardless of where they live or what or, or what school system they're in this was essential for the dutch media literacy network approach which was founded in 2008 and the education models that have been developed by this network have been adopted by the european commission so I'd like to give you some, some insight into how the Netherlands managed media literacy nationally. Um, <clears throat> an interesting fact, um, there is no official national strategy on media literacy and safe use of new media in the Netherlands. The Ministry of Education, Culture and Science is, is responsible for the national policy on media. The national government helps parents and educators to educate children in dealing with media. And it's good to point out that in the Netherlands, media literacy, according to the definition used here, the ability to access media and to understand, critically evaluate, create and communicate media content. In the Netherlands, it's called media wijsheid, which translates into media wisdom. Slightly different, maybe, but you probably get the difference. Um, media literacy and, and online safety through formal education. That's the, the crucial part for education in the Netherlands. So although schools are apparently not obliged to have media literacy and online safety education in their curriculum. So here we go. It's still not a protected curriculum proof topic, strangely enough. They are strongly advised to do so. Many schools are already working to improve the digital citizenships of their students, meaning that students are aware of social media and use it in a responsible way. And this also includes responsible citizenships uh, with citizenship with regards to the use of internet, cell phones, and other media. At a conference in 2019 about digital citizenship organized by the by the city of Utrecht in, in their program. And it was pointed out, it was an important moment in the Netherlands. It was pointed out that the e community has huge consequences for the interaction between people online. And as they call the digital citizenship, can also be an important way to, to, prevent, to prevent polarization and, and radicalization. Uh, two websites were initiated by the government to promote media literacy and online safety in general, including through formal education again based on that network i was talking about media wiser mediawisdom.net and mediawisdom.nl and both websites are and and their aims and contents are um, uh, actually important tools in dutch education nowadays so again the dutch media literacy network mediawiser.net as it's called was established in 2008 at the initiative of the government, um, it aims to provide all Dutchmen with a framework that they can use to become more media literate in order to increase, again, 
full participation in society. They said being media literate means literally possessing the knowledge and the skills to be able to function consciously, critically, and actively in a multimedia world. So that multimedia idea has always been very important, knowing that media is more than just traditional media, newspapers, uh, radio, television. But again, a lot of online um, from the very uh, early days already were, were involved in this thinking. So MediaVisor.net, um, the, again, the, the Media Literacy Network is, is actually an expertise center that links the activities of um, various organizations in the area of media literacy and promotes cooperation between them. Um, and this network is broad. It started with five organizations at the center score, including the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision, my, my former working place, but also the Information Society platform, um, and the National Library of the Netherlands, you know, right, the Royal Library, in fact, uh, an expertise center for ICT in education, and public broadcast, the public broadcast the casting company, NPO. Indeed, um, sounds similar to uh, what we've done in, in Australia recently. Um, these organizations all cover um, like the Alliance in the Netherlands, a specific area within the media literacy playing field. Um, and as I said, it is a networked approach. So apart from these five, call them founding, founding partners uh, for, the, for the Dutch uh, media literacy network, uh, more than 1,200 organizations have registered as network partners. Um, libraries, schools, media producers, museums, research institutes, institutes um, publishing companies, uh, and more. Um, there's a free net, uh, network membership, uh, which enables all these organizations to meet, exchange expertise, and develop new initiatives. So it's really based on network um, dynamics, and, and it works. It's, it's been pretty successful. Uh, the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science is responsible for the national media policy. The, the national government helps parents and educators to educate children in dealing with media. For example, um, what's called in Dutch Kijkwijzer, which means, which means watch wisely. Um, it warns parents about the age at uh, which a program or movie can be harmful to watch, for example. Uh, all productions receive an age-related advice. So this guide, this, this watch wisely, uses symbols that show the topic of the advice, for example, violent content or discriminations uh, or use of, of foul language. Um, then there's the, the Netherlands Institute for Classification of Audiovisual Media, called NICAM. Um, they developed the standards for the advice concerning age. Uh, NICAM also deals with, with complaints people might have about the wrong use of the advice uh, produced as might use. And there are about 1,600 companies, members of NICAM, uh, either directly or through brand organ branch organizations. Um, so it's actually all about age limits here. Also, in, not, not only on, on films or broadcasts, but also for video libraries, game distributors, and so on. Um, the network media advisor, media wise, the, the Dutch Media uh, Literacy Alliance helps in using uh, modern media. Children and young people use media a lot, of course. According to the statistics, Netherlands, um, seven in every 10 Dutch internet users aged 12 years and older were active on social media in 2018. Um, when the last European survey on, on, survey on media use uh, took place, Facebook, Twitter were very popular social networks. Um, nearly all young people were regular users of, of these platforms. Um, children under 12 also use media more and more. And again, as so already, um, or Julie, sorry, already pointed out, often without supervision. Um, MediaVisor.net helps children, young people, parents, and educators to use media safely and responsibly. It also explains the possibility to use media. It organizes public campaigns uh, or workshops and carries out research on media use. 
Again, more than 1,200 organizations and companies and institutions are connected to the network. And uh, the, all these organizations work in media awareness raising, provide educational materials and manuals, give workshops, have projects, and do research on safe use of media. Uh, and they all can meet and work on that platform together. That's mediabaster.net. Um, an interesting and, and I would say pretty successful uh, event has been a game, actually. Um, we called it Media Masters. It was a game that won a couple of prizes for media education uh, since 2016, I guess it is. Um, as the most successful European initiative for children between 9 and 16 years in using social media in a responsible and constructive way. And actually, Media Masters, the game stimulates the dialogue between students, parents, and teachers about social media, commercials, information skills, programming, games, cyberbullying, video blogging, uh, imaging, virtual reality, and online behavior. Um, to know another, I think, important tool that had been developed in the Netherlands was um, the competence model, as we call it. And so to know what uh, a media literally Sorry, what, to know what a media literate pupil or student must know or be able to do. Um, the competence model on media literacy has been developed. Um, and this media literacy competence model uh, is divided in a number of competences. Um, one is to have an insight in the mediatization of society, to understand how media is made, uh, the competence about how media color reality, um, about the use of apparels, software, and applications, about being able to orientate oneself in media surroundings, uh, to find and process information, to create content, to participate in social networks, to reflect on one's own media use, and to achieve goals with media. And for each of these competences, there are various levels of skills involved. Information skills help in searching, finding, assessing, processing information. Um, and on the website, the, the, the hub that uh, media literacy, mediawijsheid.net created, there are a number of examples given um, to work with this competence model. Um, As I said, promoting media literacy and online safety through non-formal and informal learning. That's an important aim for this media literacy network in the Netherlands. Um, and then one example of a program that promotes online safety through non-formal learning is uh, what was called MediaWise by Making Media. And there has been a successful approach towards migrant youngsters, making migrant youngsters MediaWise. Um, and MediaWise by Making Media has been accepted within a specific route that was called um, Resilient and Meaningful Societies of the Dutch National Research Agenda, so a broader embedded in the research agenda in the Netherlands, the broader approach. And in this case, this project investigates how young migrant people, refugees in particular, can be trained in processing information and using media in order to feel at home more quickly and prepare for a future in the Netherlands. Um, another interesting example, in my opinion, is raising awareness about the risks posed by new media. And uh, one of these risks, risks is um, uh, online bullying. Um, uh, in the week against bullying um, in September last year, um, the theme was called Online Bullying, Deal With It. And in that week, in September, teachers uh, were supported with tips, tips and tools to prevent and tackle online bullying. Uh, they cooperate with parents and the school team and the students, and in this case, MediaVeja.net and the partners in the in the network in the alliance organized many activities to to take place in the week. Um, so 
just to give you an idea of what's happening in the Netherlands, obviously the, the whole world is dealing with information, misinformation, truth versus fake news, etc. And now also due to COVID more than ever. So worldwide during the, the past months, the concept of viral misinformation has posed an entirely new level of risk from conspiracy theories about how COVID-19 began and its spread being facilitated by 5G networks uh, to fake photos of dolphins swimming in the canals of Venice. Um, uh, this is a bit of extraordinary uncertainty when people are full and, and feeling deep anxiety and they will seek out information that will make them feel at ease. Now they're seeking news that they feel like they can use. And unfortunately, a lot of that news is wrong. So again, that, that, uh, that, that famous phony dolphin rumor may have been relatively harmless, but as COVID-19 continued to hop from country to country, and um, in, in some countries already facing a second wave, understanding what information about the pandemic is real and what is fake has become uh, an almost life and death matter. Um, and then I'm not even talking about disinfectants and UV lights that could be used to treat the virus. Um, people are responding to two pandemics, the coronavirus crisis and what UNESCO calls the disinfodemic. And I've also heard um, terms like scandemic. It means that there are so many sides to what's happening in media nowadays. One defense against this, this infodemic is to ensure that all people acquire, again, media literacy competencies. People who are media and information literate critically evaluate the information with which they engage, they think and verify before using or sharing information. And in times of the coronavirus, we are exposed to a large amount of information. And instead, a lot of it is, is false or inaccurate, which indicates the urgent need to work harder to strengthen our media literacy skills. More than ever before, we are in, in a critical need of knowledge that allows us to identify the nature of information we are surrounded by, identify those pieces that are useful, incredible, protect ourselves from misinformation and take control over what we read, listen or watch, as well as create critical independence from the media. Our citizens are also aware of these needs and are increasingly seeking advice and information. And that's one of the main reasons why, again, we decided to establish the Australian Media Literacy Alliance. So regarding AMLA, Australian Media Literacy Alliance, where are we now? So, a new organization again, uh, um, and our communication goals for the coming months, coming period is actually to create awareness for the new Australian media literacy. That's why it's crucial to be uh, in seminars like this, to present ourselves, and again, to foster interest in the activities of, of EMLA. Um, we, the partners, the founding partners agreed that our vision was an aggregation model, indeed like the Dutch example. Uh, gathering together what is already happening, naming it, raising awareness, and creating an online space for people to find and share information. Uh, we, we defined a number of proposed um, national media literacy education initiatives. Um, and actually, we said national leadership is a critical step to lead discussions and advocacy for ongoing investment in media literacy education through five in this case five proposed initiatives one was the advocacy for high quality media literacy education then we defined a world leading evidence-based research to underpin media literacy education national leadership through a network of media literacy champions building a national framework for teaching and measuring media literacy and the production and circulation of engaging media literacy resources for all Australians. The Alliance members will deliver a strategy to support the implementation of media literacy initiatives across the academ academic, the schools, government, public and cultural sectors. 
and the services will ensure media literacy is a key educational outcome across primary, high school, tertiary and adult learning education. National collections play a key role in the developing of media literacy programs and championing the democratic values through authentic experiences. The Alliance will drive increase in increasing scholarship in this field, developing evidence-based approaches and contributing to world-leading research outcomes. To wrap it all up, we are living in a time of great uncertainty in which a climate of fear is aiding the spread of mistruths, falsehoods and fake news from all parts of society. And trust and trustworthiness are really important factors when it comes to media literacy. That's why six trusted brands in Australia, all media and education related, decided to establish this media literacy alliance. We, the, the partners, will all dedicate our respective resources, our knowledge and some basic funding to this initiative. And also we will link all our existing individual media literacy initiatives in, for example, our exhibitions and education programs in order to build the alliance from scratch. Of course, we will need external funding to further build our hub, the, the website, the communication around our initiatives in order to create awareness for the alliance and to actually produce the tools that we want to produce. Um, actually as an answer to what is happening in media nowadays and to leading media literacy education for all Australians. That's it for me. I thank you for your attention. Jan, thank you so much. That was a really good summary of the Australian Media Literacy Alliance work. We've, we've had quite a few questions in, so I'm not sure we'll be able to get through all of them. But um, the questions tend to be around what resources are available. So um, there, there are a couple of questions. One is about the resources you mentioned from the Netherlands, and particularly that competency for media literate students, and asking whether that could be made available or does it need to be adapted for use in Australia? And then the other part of uh, another question is, are there specific resources at the National Film and Sound Archive that you would recommend for teachers of media literacy? Yeah, both, both, both questions can be answered uh, in a very simple and direct way, and it is um, go to the respective websites. So in, in the first case, the, the Media Wisdom uh, Competency Model, which is um, published online at mediawijzer.net. Um, it's a Dutch word, it spells a bit weird. Uh, media, Media, uh, Wijzer, uh, W-I-J-Z-E-R.net. But if you Google Media Literacy Netherlands, you will probably find it as well. It's where this, this um, um, competence model has been published with a lot of examples of how to use it, um, the, the 10 competences and what it can mean in terms of active learning and, and for, for teachers, uh, educators uh, to use it in, in classrooms with the students. Um, an interactive model as well as presented there. So that's interesting regarding the National Film and Sound Archive. Actually, what we do is about media literacy. So all our exhibitions will have online exhibitions at this moment, mainly have an, um, an, a media literacy component in it because actually what we do is providing context around specific topics in media. Having said that, on our website at the NFSA, you will be able to find our approach towards media literacy. Um, nevertheless, we want to make it a more that's a more focused part of what we're doing, and we're preparing an, uh, an exhibition about media literacy that will take some time, of course. Um, but next year, 2021, we will live will be live with a focused media literacy exhibition um, done in, in, of course, in collaboration with some of our partners within the Media Literacy Alliance. But the short answer is, uh, please go to our website. Uh, nfsa.gov.au and you will find a lot of information about how we deal with media literacy, also our education programs which are obviously focused at media literacy.
That's wonderful. Thank you, Anne. And what we'll try and do is find those websites and send them out to everybody in some way who's on this call so that they've got that resource. And just a very quick, we've only got two minutes, but we've got another question, which is um, a really important one. So it's the question is, I would like to know if you think the work of the Dutch Media Literacy Network has had a positive impact on the way citizens in the Netherlands are handling the infodemic at the moment? And is there an indication that Dutch youth have a better grasp of the media landscape compared to their peers in neighbouring countries or compared to their peers of earlier generations pre-2008? Yeah, that's that's a that's a great question indeed. Um, it's it's been the, the starting point of all these questions in the Netherlands. Where to start when it comes to media literacy? How to build knowledge? How to build skills? Um, it came with a lot of research, like what we're doing at the Media Literacy Alliance in Australia as well. The research is crucial to to monitor actually the, the state of um, media literacy in, in a country, not specifically the Netherlands or Australia, but in any country. So research has always been an important, crucial factor in everything we've done. Um, and yes, we could measure it. We could measure based on specific um, uh, communication and, 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 and skills KPIs, so to say, how people were improving um, in, in terms of getting uh, getting knowledge and, and understanding media literacy. On the other hand, and that's an interesting one if you talk about pre-2008, and this is what I always say in, in, um, in conferences, actually media literacy doesn't exist simply because a person, let's say a kid's 12 years old nowadays, will have totally different media literacy skills, will need totally different media literacy skills compared to a 12 year old in 2030. The other way around, um, a kid that grew up in uh, early 2000s, um, becoming media literacy based on the media that were at hand at that time will be a totally different person when it comes to media literacy compared to a, a kid now in, in the 2020. So it's interesting to see how the topic itself evolves and I think that's at the end of the day the, the crucial role for an alliance like the Media Literacy Alliance, Media literacy alliance in Australia and other uh, alliances in other countries. It's you know, We need to be flexible and understand that media literacy develops and evolves in a, in a, you know, high, on a high pace actually. Um, in the Netherlands Given the fact, I think, as an answer to um, the difference between the Netherlands and neighboring countries, I think given the fact that the Netherlands were pretty early in, in defining media literacy, even when it wasn't a national strategy um, at that time, but defined the simple fact that it was defined as a crucial factor in education in the Netherlands, again, starting the network based on um, a number of um, of partners and, and building that network around the topic um, created a sort of um, advantage in that way compared to neighboring countries who actually followed the model. I mean, it's, it, I don't think it's rocket science actually that the fact that we in Australia more or less implemented a similar, uh, a similar approach, a networked approach, an aggregation model of bringing all the knowledge that is available to to a place that is accessible and, and usable um, is, is, a, is a logical solution. Look, and, and I think that other countries following that model profited from it. Uh, and I think there is a sort of common European level of media literacy in, in the respective countries because the, under the influence of the European Union and the European Commission, where digital literacy and media literacy are indeed crucial topics as well most of the countries reached the sort of well level playing field i would say in which media literacy has become an important factor first of all but also something that is through the countries on a sort of similar level i would say uh, simply because of the fact that even within europe and within the member countries in europe media literacy is seen as the network approach um, uh, on the whole continent actually creating again this equal uh, way of dealing with the topic. Of course, there are differences. For, for example, Finland is, is ahead of 
every country in Europe when it comes to education, the education system, and especially media literacy as part of the curriculum. Uh, but in general, I think there's a sort of common sense when it comes to the, the aims, the, the European aims, uh, what, what is defined as a goal to reach with media literacy, how to monitor it, how to evaluate it, and how to create that flexible way of dealing with media literacy throughout the continent. Thank you so, so much. I think it's... Uh, yes, thank you. That, that, you're that welcome. Thank conversation you, sir. we could carry on with, I hope we will. And we're looking forward to welcoming you back to Australia very soon. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, thank you. And we're going to take a short break to... now. Thank you.